For reasons that will become obvious uh, shortly, I call this section Tools for the Real World. Now the tools that we'll be discussing today will be not the uh, tools required for overhauling the engine, but the tools necessary for light maintenance, which is really the scope of this video. So we'll be looking at a few of those tools. These tools will also be required if you were going to overhaul the engine, but primarily these are, um, are light maintenance tools that we'll be looking at. A light combing really helped us out in the tool department because unlike some of the other manufacturers who only gave us a list of the tools by part number in the back of their overhaul manuals, Lycoming went to great detail and not only gave us the part number, they gave us photographs of the tools and then they gave instructions on how to use them. So there's a 33 page section in the back of the uh, overhaul manual. This is page six of that section and uh, it, it shows in great detail how to use each of the the tools that is required to overhaul the and and maintain the Lycoming engine. We do have these tools for sale if you need any of these you can contact us and, and we can supply you with them. The first one that I have is the intake gland nut wrench which we've already looked at a little bit uh, earlier. This one is equipped with a loop on the end and so it's designed to have a uh, bar through there and that works great. You can uh, tighten and loosen the, uh, the intake gland nut with this wrench. The second one is the cylinder base nut wrench. Now interestingly enough this one also came with a loop from the factory. So they, they put a loop on it and then they told us that they wanted us to torque the cylinder bases to 300 inch pounds. I'm not exactly sure how that works because what is 300 inch pounds to my elbow may not be 300 inch pounds to your elbow. So in order to uh, make this less subjective, we weld a socket on the end. We cut the loop off and then weld a socket on the end. Normally welding to sockets is not very good practice. I would never try to repair a socket by welding it, but when you slip it over uh, the end of the cut off cylinder base nut wrench and then weld it all the way around, works fine. We haven't, uh, haven't broken one yet. I think that the, uh, the Chinese sockets probably work even better because the, the metal is, um, is not quite as good. The third tool that I have here is the crankshaft thrust nut wrench. This one is uh, necessary to tighten the crankshaft thrust nut, which is one of those nuts that you're supposed to be inspecting. And uh, it has the, the splines on it. There, um, there is a specific torque for that, that nut. Obviously this isn't a torque wrench, so how do you do that? Well, if the uh, torque value is supposed to be 450 foot-pounds and you're a 225 pound guy, then you'll want to grab it at 24 inches. That's 450 foot-pounds. Lycoming actually made a chart uh, so that you didn't have to do the math. So they'd say, if you weigh 150 pounds, grab the bar here. If you weigh 175 pounds, grab the bar here. And they, they put that in one of the uh, one of the military maintenance manuals. But uh, the thrust nut wrench is a, a very good one to have. This is the crankshaft turning bar, which we've already looked at. This one is kind of a behemoth. We, uh, uh, this one's been through many, many, many engine overhauls, and so it's uh, a little heavier than it probably needs to be uh, for everyday use. Uh, the ones that we uh, that we manufacture and um, and sell to customers is is not quite this heavy and not quite this ugly, but um, crankshaft turning bar. That's what you'll use to hold the crankshaft while you're tightening the thrust nut. You'll have to have a way to hang on to the crank. The last tool that I'd like to show you is a nifty little device. This is a pal nut installation tool and I'd like to come in close on this one so that you can see exactly what this thing is. If you look closely at this you'll see that we have a neuralized knob that turns freely on a handle. And What this does is it allows us to load a pal nut on here and then put the pal nut up against the stud and even if you can't see the stud you can turn 
the, uh, the pal nut on the stud and install it. This is a very handy little thing that, uh, that we built. We actually uh, machined this on the lathe and, uh, and then this is a, a piece of discarded um, hacksaw blade. So it's uh, spring steel and uh, this, this thing works really good. If you, if you have that difficult Lycoming front harness uh, on your engine, this, uh, this tool really, really helps because it will help you to install that even if you can't see the studs.